We are recording. We are live, but we're not really live because we're just in a Zoom. <laughs> um, so, do you guys see the? I I said to Chris, "How about like half an hour ago?" I said, "How about we do this?" <laughs> yeah, looks good. Okay, Chris, were you on the last call? I forget. No, I was not on the last call. That's why. Okay. A little behind. All right. And I shared with Chris a description of this project um, that I could share with all of you, too. What did that look like to you, Chris? Yeah, it looked good. Okay. <clears throat> Doable. Okay. So there's the link. Let me... Um, I have to Ashley Don. So Don, I was I um am trying to make sure with Barbara like that we might be able to do a site grant for you instead. Okay. Um and that would mean sort of engaging a little bit of a team and thinking locally and thinking about the site implications of this work, not just the um so, you know, you can decide if you want to do that, but it would at least get some dollars in through Red Cedar. Okay. That'd and be great. we could use some site leadership on this work too, I think. And so the basic idea, um, just while we're waiting for others here, is that um, LRNG has hired I think, I think I said this last week, but NWP has hired NWP, I mean, LRNG has hired NWP to really do some consulting around in-school use of these playlists and badges. And, you know, we did that Youth Voices work and we learned a lot about sort of the creation and some experimenting with the playlists. Um, but then recently Paul and I were working on this National Geographic project with a group of other teachers and really what emerged out of that project was that the portfolios were kind of, you know, interesting in a way that, um, and useful in, a, in an interesting way. So then we thought, okay, why don't we sort of dive into the portfolio aspect of this? So we're not just designing playlists and badges for playlists and badges, but we're actually thinking about this as an inquiry into digital portfolios. Um, knowing that people have other ways to do digital portfolios, um, but that LRNG is one of the few forums where both digital portfolios, playlists, and badges all connect. Um, and we can think about the use of youth voices in it. So we wanted to dive into that sort of aspect of it. Um, within in school contexts, and so the group of you all is sort of a mix between sort of what I would call sort of comprehensive high school or like sort of regular high schools, regular. I mean, it, you're all very different. So, <laughs> and then um, credit recovery kind of programs, because this is also an area that we see as a high these playlists have a high potential use in those contexts. And so some folks work in schools that are, you know, more credit recovery oriented or in classrooms. So, um, and Ashley and Mike are the one team that's actually working in the same school, which is great. And um, we'd love to also think with Don about work, like teachers working at the same site. But this, this here is sort of a proposal for the work um, and an individual stipend that would be available. And you kind of have started the work already, or you have started the work already. So these bi-weekly meetings with kind of a plan for using the um, playlist badges and portfolios in the fall. Um, with some reporting back about what you found or discovered or would need moving forward if you were to actually use these things longer term. 
Paul and I would really do the final reporting back to SNU. So your commitment would be through January is what I was thinking that sort of the fall to test December to sort of collect data and for us to all talk about it and January for us to just work on some final documentation. Um, and then it would really be like weekly meetings through the summer and bi-weekly meetings through the summer and then maybe bi-weekly in the fall, um, you know, as, as much as we think is useful. This one, this actually all has one meeting a month. <clears throat> Does that make sense, basically? Yeah. Okay. Great, well, I'll send this around to everybody and then Don, I'll send you a um, related proposal that's more for site work. I just need to make sure Barbara's cool with us sending grants at this time of year. I mean, we just got the money, so I don't have much control over it, but. Okay. Um, okay. I have one question. I mean, this all sounds great. I'm following it. What What is it that, and, and this might be what we're figuring out, but what yeah. is it that I'm crafting and trying to do? And I'm, my understanding so far, I think, is that I'm this summer, we're using the work in any way we can and kind of becoming more familiar and then preparing materials that we plan to use in the fall with the goal of our classes having some kind of portfolio or students having a portfolio to sort of see how that goes. Is that right? Like it is, but I think it's also using the playlists and badges to support um, some sort of classroom work and the and putting together of a portfolio at the end and sort of seeing does that work in your classroom? What I mean, I know you have your big questions are really around workflow, like how can this fit in? Yeah. What you're already doing. And do you have a digital, do you have portfolio, like do the kids maintain portfolios on Google or something? Yeah, well, I have students, I have one class where they do portfolios and they are on a site of their choosing, but they turn in a lot of things via Google Classroom, so. And then they have like, they can like make a Tumblr or WordPress or something like that. Yep. And do they use those? Yeah, they, li they like them and use them. Mm -hmm. So I can see this, I'm just, um, Use them for a different purpose, though. Their 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 portfolios are revisions of writing, as opposed to completing a playlist and showing that kind of work. There's a lot. Not that there is a revision that does that goes into the playlist. I certainly know that. Um, so I just have to just have to think about that piece. But I can I can see I can see doing it. I see myself like making the curriculum piece work. So yeah, still thinking. Yeah, and I, my setting, uh, like with my photography class, um, that's definitely, you know, they use a similar kind of thing. They have a portfolio uh, um, that they maintain. And the idea is um, some of these students can maybe make a few uh, shekels on the side, you know, like, um, Sometimes they get little jobs as uh, shooting, um, you know, like senior portraits, um, senior headshots for people. And so the, I think of their uh, portfolio as something for the class, like there's certain things I want to see, but then also as kind of a business card um, for them too. And, th and they choose their um, platform too. Mostly they go with Weebly, but mm -hmm. that's yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so making that work. You know, I guess I'm kind of interested in how LRNG and Weebly would be different and, and their, the students' thoughts on the affordances and constraints of those things, I suppose. Yeah, I was wondering about that too. Mm -hmm. And that's really the more articulate version of my question too. Mm -hmm. That's what my students are doing at Weebly's mostly. Yeah, yeah. So that's in in photography and in English classes where I, I have similar questions to Dawn is like how to make all these pieces fit. So in photography, it's a little bit cleaner for me, I think, because uh, first of all, I have a little more latitude with the curriculum. 
the English classes I teach are the AP English language and comp. And so they definitely use um, now comment and they use youth voices a lot. It's just that extra piece of LRNG to make that work without overwhelming them with yet another. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm kind of in the same boat as Chris. I teach a journalism class, so there are some photography aspects of that class, and then my other classes are AP Lang also. Mm -hmm. So some ways yeah. we could use portfolios there, but it gets a little more um, complicated, and I don't want it to feel like it's just an extra step to cram in with all the other stuff we have to cram in in a course that's only offered in a semester that's supposed to be a year long in our case. Um, Journalism, like you said, with your photography class, a lot more flexible. It would be a lot easier to implement in there. Yeah, actually, I also teach journalism too. So maybe we'll talk a little more about that. Um, yeah, the um, I thought one of the things that was interesting, Ashley, that you were saying, and maybe this is still true with what you just said is that what I heard was in in your journalism class there is some like thinking about supporting differentiation right so that like the kids who are just coming in and need to sort of do some of the leveling up work then this potentially can support that leveling up and then potentially the portfolio is like for that particular context, like it's not necessarily like out in the world, but it's for that journalism context. I don't know. I don't know if that mitigates what you said. I just thought that was an interesting way to think about the use of these. Yeah, the portfolios would definitely support that kind of leveling up and it would also help differentiate um, because not every kid is going to want to focus on the same thing. So being able to use multiple playlist for different kids to have their portfolios filled with with different playlists also works and not to just spend too much time on this but like in a journalism classroom that works in the sense that you don't always want people doing the same assignment at the same time if you're doing a publication like you want some people doing op-eds and you want some people focusing on profile pieces of new teachers and and other people doing uh, maybe just straight photography work. So it does, it lends itself to the different tasks that need to go into making a publication or a thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. So are we using playlists that already exist? Are we creating new playlists? Is it a combination of both of those? Yeah, we can do a combination of those. Um, one of the things to know is that making the playlist, you can get really caught up in making the playlist, <laughs> um, as we learned. Like, that's sort of the first project we did. We just, like, made a whole bunch of stuff, <laughs> you know. And then actually, like, implementing them or using, like, really thinking about how we're going to use them sort of happened a little bit. So, um, so I think we were trying to to look at what we had, think about where we could, you might remix some stuff that already exists. And there's both youth voices and then what my task is, and I, I haven't done this yet, but we, there's another group called um, Summer Writing, blah, 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 blah. swells the acronym, I don't know what but Tanya works with them and they've been doing some playlist work, um, to uh, support, um, it's like writing that has a strong civic engagement bent. Um, so there's a bunch of journalism pieces in, of playlists there too. So like there's a set of playlists in our ecosystem that we could easily start to tap into and I think remix or remake. Um, but you're also welcome to make something new if you want to. It's just... Um, so those are in the National Writing Project? Yeah, they're in the National Writing Project set. So what I need to do is I can, I can probably, what I should do probably before our next meeting is like clone a path to a bunch of these. Like maybe we could spend next time looking at sort of what we have. Um, 
looking across the curriculum. Mm -hmm. So it's Youth Voices, NWP, and then there's another, it's like a separate group even called Swell. But <clears throat> so I could pull those together. What did you say it was? What are most of them about? Was... The Swell ones are more sort of civic engagement. Um, the idea was to do robust, there's a group of sites that have been working on like, how do you take argument, basically like argument writing work. So that's come out of C3WP. Okay. And create summer camps that aren't like school. <laughs> so how do you actually create like fun summer learning opportunities yep. that support that level of robust writing? Um, so they're all very sort of civic engagement oriented and journalism oriented and um, have, I just think we could tap into a bunch of that. Like one of them is how to do Vox Pop interviews. Like at Maine, they developed a playlist about Vox Pop interviews. And then actually that Places We Love playlist came out of the um, Kansas City Writing Project developed that idea of taking mentor texts, like local mentor texts, local poems, and like supporting kids in developing poem, poetry out of that work. Um, so okay, there's a set of them that we can look at. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. Right up my alley. Mm -hmm. um, so Paul really sent, um, yeah, we should look at the notes from last time. There's some good ones. And Karen, the notes are good and then Karen actually went through and sort of highlighted some like things that she really thought were important. One of them in particular, who are these portfolios for? <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's a good question. Um, so, but then Paul shared with us, um, Paul from Southern France uh, shared with us um, the, because it came up last time, what are the sort of templates or what's the guidance that um, teachers like Kieran and Jessica and some of the other portfolios we looked at last week, I think Nicole too, have been using to develop the portfolios to support the kids in developing portfolios. So there's this show your skills playlist. I don't know if you guys have already looked at this. Dawn or Chris, but you're in new voices a lot. Mm -hmm. Or if it's new. I don't know how new it is. Yeah, I just looked at it like about an hour ago. Yeah, it's the first time I'm seeing it too. Yeah, new to me. Okay, so I think that this is why I was hoping Jessica or Kieran would be here just to understand, but I think that they developed this. I really think it's Kieran and Paul actually who developed this as a way to support kids and making portfolios. So Paul was saying we should take a look at it because it sort of responds to what people were asking last week. Um, and it looks kind of interesting when I just took a fast glance at it. And then he also sent two portfolio examples, this one from Harvest. Um, this is, we looked at this last week, but it's gotten added to so far, so we could look at this work. And then um, this one from, I think this is from Jessica's class that, well, I forget which school is which. It doesn't really show very easily what school they're from, does it? No. Um, so we could look at those and then, um, I don't know. I was thinking start there and maybe others will join us. That works for me. Okay. Should I share or is that annoying? Like, should we just look at it? No, I think that's good. I'm glad you're sharing. Okay. Personally. Okay. Um, so if I were Paul, I would have someone read this portfolio. Anybody want to? Let me make it bigger. 
or hey, read this playlist. Does anybody want to start? Sure. Um, I can't really read it on your screen though, but oh. it says show your skills. I know that. And then are, we're talking about what's under the icon. Yeah. Uh, I'll just, I'm on that page too, I think. Okay. Uh, well, I see get started, start the XPs. And the interest categories is what I'm seeing on my screen right now. Do you see now that you have some badges, we want you to tell their story? It's a little off of, this is maybe, Maybe my screen's, I'll make it a little bigger. Yeah, it's kind of over to the edge. Is anyone else experiencing that? I can't read the whole sentence. Okay, there we go. Now we have some, now that you have some badges, we want you to tell their story. So uh, we want, we invite you to create, manage, and publish a portfolio on LRNG to tell a story about your learning and to show us your work from a class or program over a specific period of time. In this playlist, we will show you how to set up your portfolio, reflect on your work, post on youth voices. And then it says XPs complete the following XPs and your playlist progress will be updated. And those are the three XPs. Those are the same, yeah. Right. yeah. And then earn this badge. The oh. badge is show your skills, right? Mm -hmm. We invite you to create, manage, and publish a portfolio on LRNG to tell a story about your learning and to show us your work from a class or program over a specific period of time, maybe. Yeah, it's kind of a repeat. And then same thing, yeah. Although there's criteria there now. Yeah. And so the with the work for each XP, I can say, my badges are organized and easy to find in a portfolio. My reflection on the work in my portfolio includes descriptions of the work, the more challenging work linked to the badges as well as my best work. My portfolio is available for all to see on a Youth Voices discussion post. And then there's a get started, show your skills. That takes you back. Um, great. So maybe we could just go through the three pieces. So set up the, your portfolio. Does anyone have any questions over what I just read? I just added one in our. It not. It's not. It was inspired by what you read. I added it to our notes. One question I have about portfolios is how many playlists are appropriate or should be completed for it to make it a portfolio. Mm -hmm. It might have a sense of that in the links. I don't know. And I actually had a question too, which is why I asked. Um, <clears throat> this seems like it's, it's predicated upon people already doing some work to a certain extent, right? Yeah. Well, now that you have some badges. Right. It's predicated on you having badges. Yeah, because from the outside, just looking at it from the first time, show us your skills. I thought, oh, okay, I've got some skills. I can show those. But <laughs> it, it's really saying, like, show us stuff you've done on our LRNG. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I also was, um, like, when I first saw this, I wanted to know immediately what Post on Youth Voices was about because I was – because that to me answers starts to answer the audience a little bit. I mean, because they're who we are, we want you to tell you their story. Now that you have some badges, we want you to tell their story, i.e., the badges story, right? Right. And it's not clear who we are or who the audience for this is, or you know, so that was one thing I had. I, I was wondering, um, I mean, in context, it would make sense if your teacher was sharing this with you, but um, out of context, when I came to it, I just wasn't sure. And then post on Youth Voices, I wanted to see like, oh, wait, what, what are you posting on Youth Voices? And 
I think if I read it correctly, because I read it quickly, it's that you post the portfolio itself on New Voices and get feedback on your portfolio. So I was like, oh, this is really meta. <laughs> hmm. Should we go in to set up your portfolio? Sure. Any other comments or anything? Anybody want to read this? I will. Uh, just trying to get to the same spot on my screen. Okay. We invite you to create a new portfolio on LRNG to show off your badges and other work you have in your My Work folder. Start by pressing right click or control click in the, on the portfolios tab above on top. Open. Okay, I feel like I need to do that to understand it. Um, open that link. I think if I was logged in, you could see that. So I don't know if you're logged in. You yeah, I'm not, my work. I'm not logged in. I'm, I'm not logged in either. Well, I'm gonna do that in a different tab and see. Okay, uh, open that tab, or open that link in a new tab, then go back and forth between that tab and this one to find the next thing to do. Hit the start from scratch button, then add each of the following. Title, name of your class or program, including dates, for example, Power of Poetry, Harvest Collegiate, Spring 2019. Portfolio, header, header image, do this later. Notice the long, narrow size. Portfolio content, add section, or, section name, create a new section for each of your badges. Your teachers might recommend other sections as well. Session description, for now just type my reflection. Add work, add spaces for four items, best for badges on each block, then add a badge for each section and two or three items that you want to highlight. Two, add about me info, author image, add it later. <laughs> Show as name, include both my name and username, type complete name carefully, capitalize first letters of names. About me, add a bio, copy and paste and edit the one you wrote for Youth Voices. Social links, add them later. Port publish portfolio, shared status public, interest areas, writing and communication, civic engagement and social justice, or choose yourself. Contact info, click allow people, view my portfolio, find and share button and copy link. See this example in this how-to. Let me just put this up. So it does seem like it's something like they made for Kieran's class because. Okay, so here's Paul's fake portfolio. <clears throat> I don't understand. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. This is the how-to. And I logged in. I mean, those steps make more sense when you see the dash, your like, not, or your navigation at the top. You can tell, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just gonna ask a question I think I've asked before. So the portfolio in LRNG, people from the outside can't see it or? No, they can see it. The kid. If the kid makes this part, if the kid makes shared status public, uh -huh. then it's seeable. So let me just go here to Youth Voices. If you're still watching my screen. Uh -huh. um, and this came up last week because it's a little hard to actually find the portfolios once it's just in this list. But if you click here, so this is the homepage for Youth Voices. Mm -hmm. And if you click portfolios, they all start to show up here. And they're, they, I think they're just in order by creation date. Like they're not hmm. organized. I mean, that that would be one of the things that I think is sort of would make this difficult when we start using them across, if we start designing them across classroom, it makes it difficult that you, it's not that easy to find. So Jillian there on the left or 
Yeah. Um, so that's like she could theoretically share this link of her finished portfolio. Yeah, it looks like 61 people have looked at it. And, and that's the portfolio or uh, just one of the elements of it? That's the portfolio. So I think that Jillian, because she's at Harvest, followed that show your skills playlist. Okay. And so this is her portfolio. And the one that Paul recommended we look at is this, or these two. And I think they, they follow the same. Does that make sense, Chris? Uh, yeah. I think portfolios are going to look a little differently depending on the context then. Yeah, so these are the ones that they designed hmm. given the context of Kieran's class. So this show your skills, I mean, that's one of the questions about this show your skills portfolio thing that I have is, um, like this is basically a walkthrough template of how to make a templated portfolio, but you can set up these portfolios like it's plug and play a little bit back there. So you could set them up in a variety of ways. So this is just one design and you know, you could also make, I think, I mean, what Paul's asked for is a customized template so that they, you know, we could have templates back there. And you could set up a template for, portfolio uh, for photo class or something like that. Should we see what else is here? So this is, this is the complete the XP and the instructions and you'd have to, when you sign in, actually let me just sign in. <clears throat> See if this works. I don't remember my password is Dan. I must be using a different browser. That's weird. Okay. Anyway, um, these are the resources. that they uploaded. So it's really about the power of poetry work. And see, this could be remixed if you wanted to remix it and make it your own. Remix what? The playlist. So, so you can, you're saying you could copy this and then change a couple things around. Yeah, let's look at that next week. It's kind of cool the way it works. You can like make copies of any playlist that any other teacher or anybody else has created in the system and then remix the whole thing and make it your own. And it still, sh like it'll say where the origin playlist is. So it's kind of, it's kind of a nice system. We haven't used it all that much. Should we look at reflect your work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone want to read this? I can do it. Can I make? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we invite you to write descriptions for each of the sections of your portfolio. Describe how you made the work you have added to each section. Show us the skills you developed while doing this work. What are the habits of heart, mind, and work that these artifacts show you have? Compose your writing in your version of a Google Doc that you can copy. Revise your writing with some help from peers and teachers or mentors. Then copy, uh, copy the text and paste it 
into the section descriptions in the portfolio created in XP1. Make a copy of this Google Doc portfolio section descriptions, replace the text that is in the red angle brackets. This guide asks you to write as if you are writing a letter to someone, describe some of the submissions that are in each of your portfolio sections, tell stories about the learning you did while making these artifacts, explain your achievements to your peers, family members, teachers, principals, counselors, and mentors. Explain what you learned while completing the work in each section of your portfolio. Talk about the work that was most challenging for you. Show us your best submission in each section of your portfolio and explain why it is your best work. Need more? You might also click here and use the 40 reflection questions to help you write about your work and your learning. 40? <laughs> so I just opened that portfolio sections document. Oh, it's like a... Um, Chris, what are these things called that you guys developed for Youth Voices? Like a guide? Sentence starters. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, so this is how we kind of built the, um, the guides. Mm -hmm. So this is very, very specific. Like, they're walking the kids through, like... each section. What are these 40, 40 reflection questions? Wow. I've never seen these. Does anybody use these? Um, Backward looking, forward them, yeah. looking, outward looking, forward looking. It's kind of fascinating. Anyway, just 40 too many for you. <laughs> okay. So, okay, post on new voices. Ashley, you want to read this one? Can you? Yeah, I'm mute. I'm mute. Because we want you to get comments on your portfolio, we invite you to embed your LRNG portfolio into a Youth Voices discussion post. Click this link to see general directions for posting a discussion on Youth Voices. Here's how to embed your LRNG portfolio page into a custom HTML block in a discussion post on Youth Voices. Ooh, you don't have to read all that. Oh. <laughs> Where do you do you want me to read any of the rest of it or? It's all instructions, right? All, yeah, well, right down to the bottom it says add a featured image related to the class or program. Oh, yeah perhaps a selfie of you working on or a certificate you received, add a descriptive title that expresses something positive about you and your work, and then it's back to just basic instructions. And that's that. I'm kind of curious if we can, so Paul, had us look at or wanted us to look at Wendy Rivera's. Can we find Wendy Rivera's portfolio here? I'm just curious if anybody did this. Um, I clicked on it. I, I think that you were on it a few minutes ago. I thought maybe not. 
Just on oh, Wendy's? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just wonder if she put it into these voices at all. Oh, I see. Anyway, I mean, that just seems a little bit... It's another step. Right. <clears throat> well, that aside for a second, should we look at Wendy's thing? I was kind of curious. I just, I did just find her in here. In Youth Voices? Yeah, when I uh -huh. typed Rivera, Wendy came up. Yeah, she's got an LLB portfolio there. So does it, when you, you can't see their whole portfolio though through Youth Voices, only when you're logged in at LRG. Oh, look, she did do it. Wow, she embedded it. I'm sorry, what did she say, Don? Oh, that was the question I had, was if you could put it on Youth Voices. Yeah, so, I mean, this playlist, it looks like they made it so that the kids create a common, play, a common portfolio, right? Like, they design it similarly. They reflect on it with these sentence starters, and then they post it here in Youth Voices to get feedback. Yep. I'm just wondering, did they, she get, she didn't get any comments. No. I mean, this looks cool. It is, it requires an embed, which is hard, mm -hmm. but. Should we just look at her portfolio for a second? Yeah. I was kind of curious if her about me is really the same as it is on here. Does she have comments on the one on youth voices? Well, it was published June 10th, so like my kids would have been long gone from school. Oh, yeah. I'm just curious if it magically happened. Yeah. Okay, so this about me the instruction said she could just post what she posted before. Um, we don't really have time to read all this, I don't think. But. but I, and what I, one thing I noticed, maybe we could just say some things I noticed. One thing I noticed is that um, even though the instruction said to come back and put an avatar in, she definitely has an avatar. Mm -hmm. I noticed that about the other students too. And then she did write, read and record places we love. So Chris, because you weren't here before, you know, the badge itself can be linked here. So it shows the criteria and then the actual work, you know, you can pick and choose which work. You don't even have to share work if you don't want to, mm -hmm. but um, although that's not actually true. If you share the badge, the work is also connected to the badge. So the work is always done at the bottom of the badge. Yeah, for her. Yeah, so this is like what Wendy earned. Right, okay. So if she links the badge, you can always find, wait, is this Wendy? No. Where'd I, I lost her. Oh, back here. If, um, if you link the badge, you can always get to the work and then you can also put the work directly into the portfolio. And what we were looking at last week were some portfolios where, where kids put the work here, but didn't put the badge at all. They just put the work. Hmm. Why would they do that? We were wondering about that. I think it's because actually in the class, I didn't realize this, but you can use these portfolios even if a badge hasn't been issued. Um, and so the kids were like ahead of 
the badge he's even getting. Oh, uh, yeah. You know. You can also upload content that's not made on a playlist. So let's say you, um, Joe Pariso that first year, she had kids do a Shakespeare project that had uh -huh. the four components. And then after they did it in class, they then posted it to the playlist simply because she wanted them to have a portfolio of their Shakespeare work. Mm -hmm. so they didn't even really use the playlist to lead, to do the work. They used the playlist as a way to showcase the work. Mm -hmm. And this was even before the portfolio system was built. So, isn't there a Youth Voices page, landing page, like a portfolio? And portfolio, I'm just trying to, like, I think it's cool, it's embedded, and they've got it. So I'm trying to understand the movement between those spaces. On Youth oh. Voices, it's like this, right? You just get a list of everything you've done in there. That's their activity feed, yeah. So whereas I would say the one big difference is um, LRNGU, you're choosing the stuff that you want to showcase as opposed to youth voices would have, you know, if you just made a comment, that would be the first thing that would be on the top of your activity feed. And so your best work might be down farther stream. Gotcha. There's one difference I'm seeing. Also in youth voices, you can't do this kind of meta reflection piece, right? Yeah. Because this is actually the, the po these are actually the posts, essentially, and this is the reflection on the posts. Yeah, I guess it would, it would, you could reflect on your work, but it would be, it would look a lot different. Yeah. Yeah, I think most of these reflections are, um, I don't know if this is a, Oh, some of these are just like comments back on Youth Voices. That's a comment on Youth Voices. Anyway, so this is this is a document for bio. This is a Youth Voices blog post. So this is a comment on a blog post, and this is a comment on a blog post. So she pulls all of those together and then reflects on it here. That's probably because she needed those artifacts to get the badge, right? Yeah. But she could say, you know, I did this badge and really what I want to share with you is my life story and like forego the comment, forego sharing the comments at all. Mm -hmm. She could just say, you know, I got this badge and I was proud of this blog post I posted. Basta, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm leading this conversation a little bit, but part of it is trying to get this work off the ground. And one of the things that I want to just go back to, if you don't mind, is this like, what do we want to do and learn as an inquiry team <laughs> about all of this? Because I thought you guys brought up really good points and, you know, this idea of framing as a digital portfolio project is really because we have that capability, but it can look really different ways in different contexts. And that's what we can learn from. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I am curious what you all would like to learn to really think about something experimenting with these tools you know 
I guess the portfolio is one of the tools here. The other tools are badges and playlists. Well, I guess I mentioned earlier, um, I would like to know, you know, what's, what are the pluses, what are the minuses, what are the constraints and affordances of doing a portfolio or on an LRNG platform versus doing one on like a Weebly. Mm -hmm. So I suspect, well, I don't know, I, but that's my question, I guess. Yeah. Do you think that would be a question that would be of interest to your kids too? What would be something that I would ask them about and I think they, you know, they could have something to say about it. Yeah. I have that question. Um, I know my students will. I also have a question around, I know I should be, oh, you've got it. Thanks, thanks Christina for taking notes. Mm -hmm. I, my students always want to know, like, what am I going to get out of that technology and, or that learning moment? And one piece that they love is the collaboration. So I still have, I guess I have the question around the affordances and limitations of those in terms of how, and also transferability, like if they use this portfolio, can they share the badging work and material from LRG elsewhere? And is there interaction and collaboration? Like they love getting feedback and having conversation on youth voices. So that's my third question. Yeah. And my fourth, my fourth question is also, um, cause I'm really thinking about ways to, to shift some of the ways I approach curriculum so that it can fit. Um, cause I'm thinking about workflow from curriculum base and then also so that it's not overwhelming. So I think curricularly I can see it and it's getting me closer to trying to figure out the workflow. Mm -hmm. But that part, I know I keep going back to it, but that's the piece like finding that balance. And for the sake of this project, I mean, LRNG gave us a very large, it's like a very large question they're asking. Yeah. <laughs> How could these be useful in school spaces? And what we, what they see that Youth Voices has been generating is some really interesting so Ashley and Mike, I know you weren't part of this, but um, the original grant that we won, it was like a, a competition for trying to use playlists and badges. Um, you know, that's where all that curriculum got developed at Youth Voices. Um, and, you know, if you go to Youth Voices playlist, just to point it out directly. Um, oh, look, it took a me here. I didn't think it was going to take me there. Sorry. Paul keeps changing this forum. Anyway, they're all here. <laughs> if you click on new voices and then playlists, um, you get here. And these are the ones that 25 teachers around the country developed. So LRNG saw that and they were really excited about some of the curriculum because it was also very, um, responsive to current events so when the white supremacist rally happened in charlottesville there was like a playlist the next week and you know so there's some examples of from a curriculum side how some of these playlists can be used and curricularly they're also all these playlists tie to youth voices so they all tie to a social platform where youth can share and give feedback on their work. So that was something else they were interested in. But we haven't really experimented with, you know, um, besides sort of side projects, more sort of core work. Um, I don't know, I guess Don and Chris, you guys have done, or Chris did, right? You did on like a photo club? 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was going to use that uh, that same playlist again. Yeah. Okay. And you customized that for your club, right? You made that for your club. Like getting back to Ashley's question. Right. Um, but what question of Ashley's are we addressing here? Well, Ashley had asked earlier, like, are we just making stuff we need? Like, which is possible to do. You just basically made what you needed for that club, right? Right. And then I adapted it also for a photography class too. Mm -hmm. And then is that playlist like publicly available? Or yeah. You know, you can... That's called portrait photography or become a portrait photographer was that one. And the goal was, um, you know, to do like, a, I believe, as I recall, one of the goals was to do like a professional headshot of someone because that was something that they theoretically could get paid for. Okay, I see that one. Mm -hmm. So my students did raise your voice and then I've also had a, a, yeah. some smaller groups that have done different pieces too, so. That's right. I, you know, I, I think it's pretty cool to see all those portfolios in one spot too, to see what people are working on. I've had a handful that have done different ones like stress, but one year I did all of those. So one year everybody did that portfolio. But you know, when I made that, I was revising things that I would do in my class and trying to make it transferable to other locations. And it's something that I, I uh, something's very similar to that I would have done without this platform. So I'm trying to figure out what does the platform give me that I wouldn't do in another space. That you would have otherwise, yeah. Mm -hmm. And because, and I'm excited to figure it out. I don't want to keep sounding like I'm not, um, but I remember it was like, it was very laborious to go through all of it, um, mm -hmm. these steps. So I'm trying to figure out how to make that not the case so that the heart of the curriculum is is this then that learning is what's most important but i know that paul's had tremendous success with that and and i've seen other kids that have gone through it and really loved it but i had some students that chose this year they said we love the invitation i just don't want to deal with the platform that's not what well rng wants to hear yeah so, <laughs> I was going to say, mm, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm glad that I, I, and I wouldn't have said that if we were live. Um, yeah, we're not live streaming. But that's the, that's the question I keep coming back to. Mm -hmm. Right. And I mean that, I mean, that's not what they want to hear, but isn't that, is, is that something that's acceptable to also. Oh yeah. I mean, that's part of the inquiry for sure. Um, We did a whole like summer, well not summer, we did, um, I did it in my class and then we had a whole like weekend invitation and we had kids come and they loved it. They loved the invitations. They liked the different um, modalities. They really liked everything we created. They liked youth voices and the collaboration piece. The most. Yep. And for my students, like this year, they were like, this is great. We want to do this, but I just want to put it on a different platform and share it with my class. So, I mean, some of that is, you know, what are the things that you're already doing in your class and how does that fit? Like they loved their classroom community and wanted to share it with that group. Yeah. So, I mean, we might be able to design some way that, you know, if we work together this summer that like, if we know that it, if for this piece of work, you know, in our context, I mean, I think that we could even do a piece of work, not a whole curricular unit or something like a piece of work in it, and then have portfolios, the kids share the portfolios with each other. Like we could make that a very conscious effort to, to share the portfolios. Um, 
I can, I see that potential and I see that figuring out the workflow potential. Um, I just, I don't know if it's okay to raise these types of questions to me. That's what inquiry part of an inquiry, but though that's what I'm trying to figure out. Cause I think it's pretty cool. And I think there, there are ways to make it work. I, I just don't want it to like, take away from what I, what we want it to like the heart of it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it shouldn't, you know, ruin your classroom either. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it didn't, I yeah. just like, if you've got already got something set up that it's trying to figure out how to get it into that, that yeah. I'm, I'm known to like for years over a decade, at least I've always jumped in and done, the thing and then may figured out how to make it work. Mm -hmm. But sometimes making that work would mean that I would work on it for a long, long time. And I'm learning now that sometimes maybe I'm complicating it too much. So I don't want to do that. I want it to be like manageable for students and for me. Too. Yeah. I think that's fair. I, I think it absolutely should be. And so we could either, you know, finding a manageable chunk of something, um, if you want to participate, you know, then like, I feel like that would be a key thing. Yeah. I think if it's, if it's actually, if it has legs for classrooms, that's a big question. I mean, I guess a big question, question to have. I know my colleagues, that's a first thing, like, most of like I have colleagues that will just say like it's great what you're doing but I know what you're doing it beyond right so I think that's also fair people have a lot of things going on in their lives so that manage I guess manageable is a question yeah. Yeah. for me yeah I think it's good and one thing that um in terms of management of the work, and I realize it's nine, so we should go, but um, I know when Paul was working with folks, they created spreadsheets to help them manage what was happening in here. So it's like yet another thing. So I shared those spreadsheets with LRNG with the, their permission, because LRNG has to change the platform to make it more manageable, right? So those are examples of like how a teacher might want to manage the thing. You know? Yeah, you've got to have a dashboard that has like I click on a student and it's got poof, you know everything right. Here's their stuff. Yeah. Within within a context too, like within a group or within a yeah. Mm -hmm. So so part of part of the what we know already is that the the back end needs some um, serious editing and what to support a better dashboard as a teacher or a mentor in the back end. Um, so this is, this is supposed to document is meant to document, like what are the management tools that are needed, you know, to make this thing manageable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one yes. inquiry question could be like, what is, what do effective dashboards look like? I mean, they already exist in other LMSs, but still. Oh, yeah, that's, that would be great. To, that's a great question. That would be great to gather. It's like ones that you find useful. Right. And in this, in this setting, what would be a useful dashboard? Yeah. I'm going to write that down. When I'm, oh, I'm still sharing my screen. Sorry. We should probably go, right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. But I, li I like the opportunity to be able to trouble through these questions. And I, my understanding is this was what part of the, the inquiry would be. Yeah, it exactly is. I don't know how we get to it all otherwise, you know. Yeah. Well, thank you all for joining tonight. Thank you. Um, thank you. I've made a list of like other times and dates that are mostly on Wednesday at eight o'clock every other week, except for the request you had, Don, which was to do Tuesday 
what is it, July 2nd, actually, I think yeah. it is. Thank you for that. Um, and Paul agreed, said that was fine with him. So, um, so this is the schedule. I realize not everybody's going to be here for all of those, but in general, does that kind of work for you guys? Mm -hmm. That should be in Belize at some point. Um, I, I think that's an off week for meetings. I don't think there's anything scheduled on there. Woohoo! <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. Have a good trip, Chris. Thank you. And Ashley, have a good trip yourself. Where are you headed? I didn't catch that part of the beginning. I teach in Ireland coming up now. Yeah, fun. Yeah. Safe travels. All right. Thanks. Have a good summer. Well, we'll see you soon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Night all. Right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.